All right, what's everyone? It's Matt Merlick. This will be a second work in progress on Thor. I put some paint down. I actually haven't even uploaded the first video, the prep video, but I'll upload that today after I do some painting. So today's goal is I'm going to work on the cape. I'm going to work on the base and see how long that takes me to get done today. So I want to get the cape done because as much as I love capes, it's kind of like one of my least favorite things to paint because they're so awkward and they're sometimes hard to deal with. Luckily, this one's relatively small and light compared to a lot of other capes I painted. So we'll see how it goes. So my initial thought was I was gonna spray a base coat of red and then do the shading, but I'm gonna use the fact that red is really crappy at hiding and do my shading first and then layer red on top. It'll just give me a better, a deeper, more uh, interesting look, I think. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with some white, Mr. Color number 107 character white. Um, I think I got enough of this to do what I need to do. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot. I really like this white. It's not, um, it's kind of hard to describe what it looks like. It's not, it's got a little, just a tiniest bit of gray to it. It's not like pure bright white. I really like it. It's really good for this kind of thing. So let me get a clean cup and mix this in. And I need to go get another bottle of thinner. Be right back. And we're going to thin this pretty good. Let me get um, an air, make sure I have an airbrush that's actually clean. I think we need some cleaning. I meant to clean my airbrushes last week. I never got around to doing it. So hopefully this will work. I'm just going to throw some black right there in here and clean this out from doing the Naruto and the Sasuke part of I did over the past few weeks. Glad those are out the door. Just give me a second here. As, usually I'm not, as usual, I'm not ready to paint right away. Okay. My thought on the cape is do some highlighting in white and then I'll go in and add some shadows with like a wine red. I really like wine red for shadows. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll do a base coat of red and then go in with like a deep clear red um, to add shadows. I kind of change it up. It kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for. Today I'm in the mood for doing all my shading and then laying on the color. Let me clean my workbench real quick. A lot of stuff on here. I really need to spend a day cleaning the studio again. <laughs> very booth. I think I do that every, with the amount of painting I do, I used to do it like once every six months. Like a really good deep clean. I really need to do it like once a month now because when you paint as much as I do and other guys who paint full time, it's just messy. You get stuff everywhere. Okay, so back to this. We're going to mix up some white. This needs some thinning. It's not thin already. Sometimes I got paint that's very thin. And my thinning ratio again is just kind of, I'll probably over thin this a little bit so it'll atomize better. <clears throat> that's all that's going. So I use Mr. Color. This is uh, the leveling thinner. You can use either leveling thinner or regular thinner. Um, the only time I really try to use leveling thinner is if I'm doing a gloss black and I need to get like super, super smooth. Um, it just slows down the drying and leveling characteristics of Mr. Color. Otherwise, I just use, use regular thinner and it's fine. Now I'm going to try to clean my paint stirrer off here a little bit because it's got a bunch of other colors on it. And I don't want to tint it to the white. my little badger paint stirrer. I love this thing. It's basically like a milk frother. You could probably use a milk frother if you had one. But um, these things are great. I love them. It's one of those little, there's a bunch of tools in modeling that are kind of like gimmicky. Uh, I'm like, eh, you don't need that. This is kind of one of those gimmicky things that I really, that I really like actually. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff out there. It's like, yeah, I really don't need that. There's cheaper ways of doing things. DIY methods, but this one's just works. The only thing I don't like about it is that since I use a lot of lacquers, 
I melt them quite a bit because I get lacquer thinner on the uh, on it. So I like to thin my paint in the bottle if I'm mixing up a decent amount. I just that way I can get all the paint out of the bottle, and I just use the stir to mix it around and try to loosen up all the exit all the paint. And so this would be like a. See, it's got just a tiny bit of gray. It's almost like a chalk. It's almost like a chalk white. That's actually a really good description. Chalk white. It's called character white, which is you know supposed to be like a Gundam thing, but I, I would call it chalk white. Okay. So I'm just kind of looking at how this goes up my cup. So right now it's thin to about how you would normally thin this as far as like painting. I'm going to over thin it just a hair. Just so it atomizes really good and I can get in and do the fine wrinkles and stuff on the cape. There aren't a whole lot of fine wrinkles in this cape. It's really towards the neckline that they get kind of fine and tight. So I'm not too worried about it. All right. So I'll show some of this on camera and I'll do the rest off because this can take a little while. And then <clears throat> since we're spraying white, I can't use a piece of white paper to check my spray, so I gotta use something that's not white. So I'm gonna use some cardboard here. And I'll probably take the needle guard off. I don't need to on this. So you can see I got a pretty fine spray. And that's perfect for what I gotta do. Okay, so what I do here is I just go in and I hit all the high spots. Let me get a let me glove on just because I got something on my fingers. I don't get it all over the cape. There we go. Okay, so we'll start right. It's a big hole in here. And then backed off pretty far because I want this to fade down nice and smoothly down into the shadow a little bit. So anywhere it's got a bigger hole, they hit that a little bit harder. And then any overspray I'll take care of when I go in and do the shadows. I'm try to keep it smooth. The hard part of these really long curves is to make sure you get a smooth, even um, look to it. It's really easy to kind of get like a dotted pattern if you're not smooth with your airbrushing. So we're basically dealing with thin layers of paint here and using the translucency to our advantage. Start here and the neck where it gets really tight. This is where I come in tight with the airbrush. And like I said, anything that kind of gets a little extra overspray, I'll just hit it a little harder with the shadow color. This is where we had the repair, it looks good. So they have these little wrinkles, I just kind of do little wisps, little wisps, wisps of paint like this. And I'll do the same thing with the shadow color.
So again, anyway, there's like a real kind of high, hard fold. We'll hit that a little bit harder. Hardest part was really, really neat paint job is keeping dirt out of it. It's a big fold right here, so I'm going to back off. It's nice and soft. And as it gets tighter, we get closer. And as you turn the, the cape in the light, you'll see little areas like even in here, there's a little fold that I really didn't see. So I'm gonna hit that a little bit. There's folds within the folds. When you're doing these things like this, just long, broad strokes will get you the best results. Luckily, this cape doesn't weigh a ton. I can hold it with one hand, and it doesn't tire my hand out too too bad. That Balzac cape I did weighed a ton. It weighed so much. It was really hard to handle. And when they're hard to handle, it's really easy to mess things up because you'll drop it, or you go to hang it up and it falls. So you know, so right here where there's a wrinkle, it comes out, flares out. I'm gonna hit this pretty hard. In here. Now this is a big shadow right there, so we'll hit that pretty hard with a shadow color. My client gave me some references, but just to kind of do your thing which I like because I do my best work then. I always tell people, if you have a specific paint job you want in mind, done by a specific painter, you gotta call that painter. You don't hire me to paint something, you expect to get a John Allred painting because we're two different people and paint differently. And John does amazing work. There's a real big wrinkle here, so I'm just gonna back way off. Right here's a big fold, so I'm gonna back way off and let that paint just kind of fall into the shadow a little bit. Kind of a big wrinkle right here. A lot of guys say they have a hard time with reds and yellows. Um, I think maybe because I've painted so many damn Gundams, I don't find those colors difficult. They do take more steps, I think, to get the right look. But they are some of the harder colors to paint. But I think you get the idea here. Uh, I'm going to turn off the camera and keep doing this on the front and back. And then we'll come back when I'm ready to do the other color. Okay. So I got both sides uh, highlighted, and now I'm gonna go on with Mr. Color. This is number 100, Wine Red. 
And we're gonna go hit the shadows. And again, I'll just show a little bit on camera and we'll do the rest off and then we'll just go here and add a little darkness to the shadows. This will give a nice undertone to the red that we're going to put on. being a little tighter with this. I'm gonna hit underneath here pretty hard. And the thing on this fold, sometimes I'm pretty loose, sometimes a little more accurate, you know, pinpoint with it. With these big folds, I'm pretty loose with it. I want nice, soft transitions. And these deeper shadows are a little tighter, tighten it up. So right here's a big fold, so I'm going to back off. You can see this kind of weird modeling look. That's just kind of the overspray from the white. That'll all go away once we... Start laying on the base, the main color. And then after I get all this done and I get the, the main red on, I can always go back and pump the sh shadows up a little bit more if I want with some uh, deep blue red. But I won't be able until I get this, this done in the, uh, the base color on or the main color, I won't know if I want to do that or not. It's also hard to get to some of these little crevices because the angles are weird. You just sometimes just physically can't get paint areas the way things are molded and casted. <clears throat> So I'll just do the back side on the underside goes a little bit quicker. There's like less folds on the underside, so I can just I'll show you this here on camera and then I'll do the other side off camera. And then we'll be in the spray booth. So I need to hang this up so I can get all around it at one time.
in some areas where you can still see the primer, they'll just have like another dimension to the paint as far as another tone goes. So I'm not carrying this 100%. I'm not being 100% opaque with either the white or this color. Can use the primer gray as a, to our advantage also to give another layer of uh, another shade. Okay, that's kind of what that looks like. So, it doesn't look like much right now. But once we start blending this all together with the main color, it'll, it'll tie, it all up, tie it all together. So I'm gonna do the front side and then we'll be in the spray booth to paint the, um, the actual color of the cape which is going to be my kind of go-to red for this kind of thing. I'm just going to call it GX Red. And I just I adjust the color of that paint by what I put underneath it, so. That's why I'm doing this before I put on the base color. So uh, when you come back, you should be in the paint booth. Okay, so now in the spray booth, I have in my spray gun Mr. Color GX number three. It's called Herman Red. And uh, I've got it in my Iwata HPTH uh, trigger gun. So we're gonna go on and we're gonna start laying this in. I've got this thin two to one. And so I'm gonna put my mask on because it's gonna get really foggy in here and I'll just show you how I kind of miss this on and start blending things. actually pretty hard because you got to try to make sure you get even coverage on everything and there's a lot of wrinkles and stuff so it's pretty challenging to make sure you get underneath everything to get an even look. And it's also easy to hit the cape with the gun so I gotta be careful. See, I kind of got fucked up right there. I'm going to have to go back and hit that with some uh, white and stuff because the gun hit it really hard, unfortunately. So I've got to fix that because you will see that. Uh, I'll probably just love to see it. I'm going to have to sand it down a little bit. I did that, but I always like to do the back side of the cape first to see how it's going and then do the front side.
also real easy to miss the edges, so I'm trying to be pretty conscious and make sure I get the edges really well. Okay. So that's the back side. I probably will go in after this dries and hit the shadows again with some deep clear red. I'm seeing the shading, but I, I think it could bring it down a little bit more. It's, hard, it's actually kind of hard to see while it's still wet, but I've got to let this spot dry. I'm going to have to sand it down a little bit, unfortunately, and fix that. I can try to paint and see what it looks like. Let's see, just for the hell of it. showing up a little bit more here on the front. It's got more wrinkles, more detail. So you can see here I'm kind of putting it a little bit wetter. So when I was doing the back, I just found, uh, I didn't say anything, but I found that if I just kind of sprayed on a little bit wetter, I get a little bit better look to it. So. gun the tip I have on it does a fan spray you can kind of see it there so depending on where I'm trying to hit sometimes I'll hit it broad sometimes I'll hit it uh, pretty straight on so like if I'm trying to get deep into a crevice I'll hit it so the spray pattern goes in this way rather than perpendicular Pretty good. It's basically like one white coat on everything. I'm gonna let this dry. I'm just gonna have to let it dry for a while because I am gonna have to sand that spot down right there a little bit and uh, and kind of fix it. Um, so I'm gonna let this dry so I can sand that down and then uh, I'll, I'll fix it and then we'll let that we'll have to let that dry again and then I'll seal it. And then I'll see if I want to go in and uh, do any more shading. 
It's actually looking pretty good, but I think I can dark. I could uh, add a little more contrast to it. We'll see. It's until I dry it down, seal it. I, it's hard to tell the shading, so uh, we're gonna let that go for a while. And while this dries, I'll work on the base. Okay, so while the cape dries, I'm gonna work on the base. This will take me a few hours, and I'll be able to sand that spot down the cape and fix it. It's kind of a bummer it has to happen, but it happens. So I'm gonna kind of do what I normally do in bases. I'm gonna come in here with some acrylics, do some stippling, some washes, dry brushing. So the first color I have in here is uh, Liquitex Heavy uh, Body Acrylic. This is raw umber. I'm just gonna kind of do it uh, bare or raw. No, I'm not gonna thin it. I'm gonna come in here and just kind of stipple this on. And I think I may do like uh, some maybe green mossy effect in some of the cracks. Now it's got this kind of cool um, detail sculpt on the front here. So it looked really nice when we bring that out. It's been carved into the stone. I thought that was kind of a metal look, but we're gonna do a stone because it looks like it's been carved out of the stone. It's not like a, an emblem that's been placed in the stone. It's been carved out of the stone. So we're gonna make it stone color. All right, so I'm gonna do this raw umber, and then when I, uh, I'll come back when I'm done with this. Okay, so I finished with the raw umber, when I gave it a very light seal with the Krylon uh, Max Flat. Now I'm gonna go and I mix up kind of a dark green wash, and we're gonna kind of, this a little thicker than a wash. I'm gonna kind of put this on, and dab it off and see what we get. Again, when I'm doing all this, this is just, these are just all the undertones. I just got a crappy old rag. Put some on, take it off. Get some getting all the crevices and everything. And I just sealed it a little bit. I wanted a flat finish so the wash would stick better. You don't want it running all over the place. I kind of want this to kind of get down these cracks to kind of give it the sense of maybe some mosses kind of growing between the layers of rock. So hopefully my plan works where when I start dry brushing and adding highlights, this will still be there a little bit and it'll look kind of mossy. That's my thought process at least. We'll see if it works. It could be a complete fail failure. You never know. <laughs> But when I sealed this, I did it just very, very lightly. I didn't hose it down like sometimes I do. When I do like a final seal, I'll really give a really good layer, good coat or two of sealer. But when I'm doing something like this, I just super light, just enough to knock the sheen down from the previous paint and give this paint some tooth to uh, stick to. So when you do a wash or anything like that, you don't want a, you don't want a semi-gloss or a gloss finish. It'll just run everywhere. It won't stain or stick. And a wash is basically just something you use for staining and getting in crevices and detail. So you want it to stick. And I think this green undertone will be a nice contrast to Thor. I've just got a lot of, um, you know, blue and red and stuff. So it'll be a nice contrast, I think. So again, when I do these first, you know, 10 steps are these are just all the undertones. So we start really bringing out the details and stuff. This is how I do it. Um, here's a bit. Seems to work so far for my projects that I do for people. So we're gonna stick with it. Now like in here, I got a little too much pooling way down in here. So I'm gonna go into with the Q-tip and just kind of 
soak some of it up. I don't want a puddle of wash. So I'm just going to go with a Q-tip and kind of soak up some of the excess where I can't get this rag to go into. So I think you get that idea. I'm gonna get that going and when I come back, I'll do the next step. Okay, so hit that wash with a hair dryer. I went in and sealed it again. Now I'm gonna mix, mix up my kind of my first kind of uh, dry brush color. I'm gonna put a little neutral gray and this uh, Titan green, pale green. So we're kind of going with a, a green undertone on these rocks, I think. It's kind of my my thought process and then we can warm them up a little bit by misting on some uh, other washes and stuff so you know, I just get kind of a crappy brush uh, let's see I have a bigger one let's see if I have a bigger brush in here crappy towel so I got neutral gray a little bit of that Titan pale green in there you mix it up mix it up a little bit not too much and again we're gonna dry brush we're gonna put some on take it off and I'll start brighten this up a little bit Initially, it's going to look a little bright and dry down. Yeah. I'm going to lay this towel. So I'm going to spin this. So, when I first do a dry brush, I kind of do an overall. And then, uh, towards the end, as we get closer to being done, I, I'll isolate the dry brushing more. Specific high areas. You can see right now I'm not being real careful. I want to kind of start tying this together. even scrubbing it on a little bit circular motions let's get it down to some of the slightly lower areas First rounds, I want to keep relatively light. I don't want to try to jump too fast. I'm going to bring up the tones gradually. And the more you go over there, the spot, the brighter it gets.
went to go to Lowe's today and get some more Krylon spray. I go through it so fast. I usually buy 12 to 24 cans at a time. That'll last me uh, four or five products, depending on the size and how many steps I do and all that stuff. So typically on a project, I'll, do, I'll go through three or four cans of sealer. So I didn't want to go just straight neutral gray. I wanted some tone to it, so that's why I had a little bit of that pale green to it. I want these rocks to have a natural, warm tone to them, not so neutral gray. This is a pretty good start to this. It's pretty flat right now, but we're gonna add some more contrast to that as we start airbrushing on some of the Vallejo washes, which I like to do. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, I think. For an initial <coughs> round of dry brushing. This kind of ties in the, the green heat wash and the raw umber we did. more tonal variation to this and get airbrush. Been cleaned. And I like to airbrush on some Vallejo washes. So we're gonna do some all sorts of things. We're gonna do uh I'm gonna got some green on there with this. Let's go with this dark yellow. So I just kind of miss this on sporadically. And this is going to get some another tonality to everything. Kind of hits certain areas a little harder to bring them out. Really like this dark yellow wash we're doing stonework. Had some um, this is, this is blue gray. I'm not sure if we're going to do what I wanted to do. Let's see. Let's maybe add a little coolness to some areas. I really want to kind of bring out this uh, carving. Maybe I'll hit that a little bit more with this cool gray. I 
Yeah, that looks good. So I'm hitting this carving a little bit more, a little heavier with this cool gray wash. It gives it a nice effect. Kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. Just a little bit. We want this really random. Stones in nature are not consistent. They are very random in tone for the most part. Okay. That's good for that. Uh, dark green. Some dark green. We're going to hit the kind of crevices a little bit with this. Adding a little kind of dimension to the shadows. Like this. This, this stuff is very thin. You have to put. You just can't hose it on. You gotta. It's basically like spraying water. I could have done the wash uh, with this, but then I kind of wanted a slightly different tone. I'm going to go in and hit that sculpture kind of in all the little details with this too, I think. You get a nice contrast between the, the cool gray. We just kind of missed it over it. I'm going to kind of put this in there to bring out the details a little bit more. And then we're going to continue dry brushing and just kind of playing around until we get the final look I like. up here a little bit. So this will be a long work in progress because we're doing a lot of real-time video. But some people like it, some people don't. I just do it because it's easier. <laughs> it's easier than trying to splice everything together later.
Kind of hose it on there. I just said don't hose it on. I just hose it on. Kind of like the look at this maybe was mossy and it kind of rained down and. Create a moss and all these little cracks coming down. That's my thought process, at least. So I'm kind of following these cracks. Hopefully to replicate moss and stuff like that. It's kind of grown between the rocks. Yeah, man, it's that fogging. I'm going to come in here and hit this sculpture a little bit. Selectively hit some of the crevices. Not sure you can see. I think my hand's probably in the way. I made this take this wash, uh, the brush in there, and they're kind of run down in that sculpture. A little bit. I'm trying to kind of make see like it's been kind of rained on and the moss is grown. dry brushing and all that fun stuff. heavy with this right now because I know I'm going to bring it up when I start doing my dry brushing so it's going to go a little heavy and then you know kind of bring it back in there. Okay, so that was darker green. 
I'm going to add a little more brown to it. This is a um, European dust. I'm going to warm things up just a little bit. This is a pretty subtle color. I may go in there. There's kind of like a rust color. A little more. Warms the things. It's going with uh, some dark rust. There we go. Has another little kind of tone. Kind of back to where we, the original color a little bit. I'm avoiding hitting the sculpture. I want to keep that kind of on the cool side. Maybe like it's freshly carved stone. So it'd be newer looking. Okay, I think after this, we're gonna go back to dry brushing. And then we'll have, I think for the most part, the rock done. Looking pretty good. It's looking pretty natural to me. All right. Let's clean this out. This. I'm gonna do a little of the pale green and some white. I'm gonna kind of add to what I got going on in here. Or just do the, this pale green by itself, and then we'll go to white a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna be a little more selective with my dry brushing. I didn't seal it. I'm just going to go right on top of this stuff. I'm just going to use the flat part of the brush. I'm just going to hit the tops of stuff. And avoid going back and forth. I'm gonna hit this part pretty tough, right where he's standing on the top part. And I think we're just gonna hit the sculpture, the carved part, with some white, and avoid this green tone. I think I may I'll do one more step probably with some pastels to really kind of get in some of the shadows. And we should be pretty dang close. Basically, this takes it usually takes me, you know, three or four hours, which is, you know, half a day. Sometimes a little bit longer, depending on how things are going. Again, just using the flat part of the brush just to hit the tops of stuff.
going top down. Okay, I'll get some white. Let's use this. I just got white just going right on top of the brush I was just using. Lightly hit this carving. Again, just kind of hits some of the very tops of things with this white and it doesn't dry pure white it dries down so I was doing some uh, licensed pieces they're like don't use pure white like it doesn't dry pure white it dries down <laughs> the way I do things Yeah, I'll do some pastel work in the shadows because even though I see some nice shapes and stuff, I think it bump up the contrast a little bit more. And pastels is the way to do that. So I'll seal this one more time after this, and I'll really go hit the, the deep shadows. This is looking pretty good. I'm digging the tones. Got some nice greens and yellows in there. Okay. I keep saying I'm done. I keep going. All right, we're going to seal this and then we'll come back. Okay, I went and sealed that again and then we're going to go with some pastels. And I actually need to order some of these, so I'm getting low on my base. I have a crap load of pastels, but I basically use like two or three colors. Um, I got metal slag. This is a uh, graveyard dirt. And I typically use a lot of. Uh, Rocket exhaust. This is a great, it's basically black. So let's start off with the metal slag. It's got a little brown to it. Let's see what this does. I don't want to cover up the uh, the green I did earlier, but I do want to bump up these shadows a little bit. And these are really, I mean, these are nice. They get everywhere. So I'm, I'm actually really kind of. I'm real loose with these. I'm not like super neat with them. I just want to bring these shadows up a little bit more. And if I put it on just right, just a little bit, I'll see the, the green wash underneath. Dab it on. You gotta let your sealer dry for a minute or two. You won't put this on with the sealer's wet because it'll just create mud. I mean, you could, it could be a cool effect, but that's not what I'm going for here. <laughs> just darkening the shots, good. Adding some more shape to everything. And these pastels get everybody get on the floor, they get my workbench, they get my hands, they get my feet, they get everywhere. They're, they're messy. But I do like them. Okay. 
really kind of hit these overhangs a little bit pretty hard and the other shadow there Kind of do like the uh, metal slide, but it kind of gave a nice little tone. And kind of hit it with the. That's too much. Sorry, right, let's leave it. <coughs> Got a little too much over here. Q-tip and try to wipe some of it off. There we go. Got a little overzealous with it. So I just moistened the Q-tip with some saliva and just kind of wiping some of it off. Got this makeup brush. It's my favorite brush. Usually I'll use this tip for applying and then the softer side for kind of smoothing it out. This is like my go-to weathering pastel brush for this kind of thing. I'm coming here, kind of accentuate some of these shapes in the rocks. Go in here and do a little bit on this carving. a little bit of the metal slide which kind of got that brownish tone to it yeah. on the other side we're going to do it here too okay that's pretty good for pastels i'm going to go seal this again and i may hit that carving one more time with the dark green wash We'll see. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to seal that and come back. Okay, so I went and sealed that. I think I'm going to hit this carving a little bit again, just with this um, dark green wash and a brush. I'm going to come in here. Let's see what happens. This could be a disaster. I want it to kind of run down. see that I 
Let me have to dry brush this a little bit more. Dabbing it a little bit. Okay, I wanted to dry brushing this a little bit since I kind of turned the whole thing green now, but no big deal. Just another layer tone. the hair dryer and come back okay so I just I'm just going through real quick and doing one more last little bit of dry brushing really really light and then I think once I seal this this will be good kind of want to bring up a couple areas a little bit brighter mainly here towards the top where he's standing and I hit that sculpture a little or the carving a little bit so that looks pretty good I think I think it was pretty good natural stone outcropping. This is really, really light, which is some white. And then we'll send a picture to my client and see what he says. Hopefully he likes it. I think it was pretty good and Thor will stand out very nicely against this darker color and tone. I think it'll look good. Alrighty. I'm going to seal that, send a picture, and hopefully he likes it. Okay, so I kind of went over the cape that one spot again, blended it in, and now I'm going to let it dry for a while, and I'm going to go back and hit the shadows with some deep clear red after the cape's dry for a while. I'm going to add a little more contrast. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm waiting to hear back from my client on the base. I'm going to start on the blue of the legs because I need to get this sprayed and let that dry overnight so I can mask it off and do the black and then do the metallics and stuff on um, all that stuff. Let's see, he just replied and he says he likes it. So the base is good to go. All right, so moving on to the blue. So I'm gonna do this similar to how I did the red. I'm gonna kind of use this gray as my base and I'm gonna go in and do, I'm gonna add shadows and then spray blue on top of that. So for that, I need, um, so I'm black. I'm gonna do black. Let's see. Come on. Sorry, as usual, I wasn't prepared. So I'm gonna go in with some, uh, just some black, hit the shadows, and then we're gonna um, just on some blue. Let's see how it looks. So I need, I need to clean up all the cup here so I get something to mix in. Actually, I got a little shot glass I can use. I'm not gonna need a lot of black. Not a whole lot of blue on this thing, just the just the legs. Sorry. It's usually not ready, so you guys get to watch me kind of clean up to get ready. Come on. I'm just trying to clean out my mixing cup here a little bit. So this is just Mr. Color 92, semi-gloss black. It doesn't matter what kind of black you're using. Just a black. And then we're gonna throw some thinner in there. So 
just like that. Get your brush going. Hit the shadows and stuff. This is seem pretty good. Hit this part of boot meets the leg pretty good. Still waiting for a paint order. I did order paint online last week, and one came really quick from Spray Gunner. And I'm waiting for one from Gundam Planet because uh, I haven't ordered paints online. The Mr. Color paints, at least. My local hobby town usually carries them, but they're having a hard time getting the colors I use a lot. This is similar to the cape. We're just going to kind of come in here and. Bring out the muscle detail. And there's a few little wrinkles here, so I'm gonna hit those a little bit harder. Keep it pretty soft. A lot of guys say don't ever shave a black or white. I do it all the time. Maybe do it correctly, it works just fine. I'll do one leg on camera. But I think you get the idea. I'm gonna to continue to do this, so I'll come back and we'll spray the blue. Okay, so I got the black down, looks pretty good. So um, I'm gonna use, uh, this is a Flamo Color Midnight Blue as the blue. And I gotta thin just a little bit of my airbrush and we're gonna start missing this on. And this is pretty thin. But we wanna see the shading through the blue. We do this in the booth, probably. So these Playmo colors you cannot get anymore. These were I bought these 12 years ago or something like that. The guy started a paint coming, screwed a lot of people out of money. I was one of the lucky ones that actually got the paint. These two backs are actually really good paints, and I still use them until they're gone. This is a hard piece to handle, it's really heavy. I kind of wish they would have cast the legs separate, just for ease of handling, because <laughs> it's heavy. All right, so there's one coat. 
I think I'll probably uh, go into the spray booth and do this with my big gun. Um, I think I'll get better, better coverage and it's just um, maybe I might just get better results. So I'll probably do that and come back and show you the end results. Okay, we're bouncing around a lot here because things are drying and moving on to other parts. So here's the cape after I did the the base color and everything. It looks pretty good, but I think I can go in and uh, make this a little bit better. So I've got some uh, GX uh, Deep Clear Red mixed up in my air, airbrush, and I'm going to go and hit the shadows a little bit more. Just add a little more contrast and a little more depth to this piece. So this has not been sealed yet. I'm actually need to take this mask off. So you know, I'll do a little bit on camera and then the rest off. So. And this is pretty thin. You go in here and kind of add a little more depth to the shadows. I'm just going to subtle at first because I got this paint a little over thinned. As I do, as I see little areas I need to kind of go in and work on. Not the end of the world, but. I just paint a little over thin. Maybe we can go back and add a little more paint to it. I'll do the back like this and then I'll probably add more paint to my mixture. I'm getting pretty loose with this. You know, move this with airbrush. Yeah, I'm going to add a little more paint to this because I'm taking a little more effort to get the look I want. That's not the right color. That would have been bad. Yeah, where's it? Here it is. Try to over thin a little bit just to atomize it better and get a better, like a smoother blend, but sometimes you gotta be careful. It's a, it's a balancing act between thinning just right, atomization, and getting the look you want. There we go. That's working much better. I always do the back as an experiment first because that's the part you really don't see as much, so. Just 
good place to start. You're doing something like this. Once I seal this, you'll be able to seal the shooting much better. So I'm going to do this and let this dry for a little while, and then I'll flip it over and do the front side. And then I'll seal it. See how it looks. I see a couple of spots. I got some trash in there. I'm going to try to fix. Area. So it's just a lot of back and forth when you're doing this kind of translucent technique. We're going to keep doing this and then when I seal it, we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, so uh, I think the last thing I'm going to try to get done today, I've got the blue down on the legs. This look is drying. It's drying. The res down, I got to let that dry and seal it and I'll show you what that looks like after I seal it. The base is done. I think I'm going to try to get these helmets kind of knocked down and we're actually going pretty simple with it. So I think I can get it done today. So I've base coated these in Krylon, just flat spray paint. And we're just going to go with a single color on these helmets. Uh, we talked about maybe doing some gold highlights and stuff on these, but uh, according to my client and the reference he sent me, they're just kind of one color to keep it a little more, more simple, which I think makes a little more sense. So I'm going to try something and uh, see how this works. I've done it before, but we're going to do it on these and see how it works with these ornate things. So this is my Kos Kosuit uh, Gin Sun Powder, basically a graphite polishing powder. And it's meant to emulate chrome over a glossy surface. But since this is kind of like a matte, semi-matte surface, it's not going to be chrome. It's going to be like a dull hammered metal, which is kind of what we're going for. So it's pretty simple. You just take some in your, on this piece of cotton, and you start polishing it on. And we'll see if this gives us what we want. So on this guy, I may actually go back and do this a little shinier, but I think this is going to do what I want on the other helmets. I think. This may actually be a good I'm just kind of getting this a really good buffing. See what kind of effects I can get with it. I 
Some better cotton here, maybe. It's not quite as used. This is from Wave. I bought this stuff years and years and years ago. I bought two things of it because it was really hard to find at the time. And I've been using the same washing powder for over 10 years. polishing it just try to bring up the, the shimmer a little bit This is designed to use over a gloss surface, but I like to use it over a semi-gloss or a matte finish sometimes. You can kind of get a nice effect. nice. I'm digging it. Anytime you're dealing with a metal surface like this, they're really finicky and fragile and they're just, sometimes they're just a pain in the ass. Looks pretty good. So it's not super bright chrome. It's like a polished metal. It's kind of what we're going for. And I won't seal this. I'll just leave, this, leave these as is. Here. All right, I 
going to try one of the other helmets, see how it looks. This looks pretty good, I think. So let's try that on one of these other helmets. It's got all this detail in it. So this will just polish the high areas and then the lower areas will get a little, should stay a little dark and grimy. It's kind of like dry brushing. I should maybe dry brush these a little bit. So if you ever seal these, you need to seal them in, uh, in acrylic. Kind of get this kind of hammered metal look. It's kind of nice. Just looking pretty good. Let's do that one. This will be a slightly different technique, I think, because I want to bring out the details a little more. So I'm going to go ahead and polish these with this. And I think I'll make dry brush a little. Alejo silver on top. See how that does, and then I may do a light wash in all the details. Yeah, I'm gonna get the helmets done, the cape done, and uh, having the blue and the base done already, that's a good day's the painting. Cause then tomorrow, the next work in progress, I can mask off the um, legs and spray the black on the boots and the body. So that's got some shading involved I wanna do. And I can't do the yellow on the boots, I don't think until I do the black, the way I'm thinking. It's looking pretty good. I'm 
going to try something in there. I'm going to try to dry brush some silver right on top of this and see what it does. It could destroy it. I'm going to have to start over. Or it could work. I don't know. We're going to give it a shot. Okay, let's put that. I'm going to close this up because it gets everywhere. I want to get some of this Vallejo. Um, <clears throat> it's white metal. Uh, little liquid metal silver. So this is Malaya, Malaya liquid metal silver, liquid silver. And we're going to dry brush some of this out and see what it does to, the, <clears throat> to these helmets right here. And this paint, the more you buff it, the better it works. It's kind of a opposite of what you normally do with paints when you brush paints. Typically, you don't want to overwork your paint. But these Vallejo liquid metals, the more you work it, the better it looks. It's kind of weird. Actually, looking pretty good. It's gonna be one more little bump of shimmer. Yeah, a little heavy there. Yeah, I think what I gotta do to get the look I want. Don't think I can just do the, the polishing powder. I think I gotta do this. And then I think I'm gonna seal it and give it a wash and then dry brush it one more time. So. I think the other helmet looks fine. This one looks good over here. Maybe I'll just give this a wash as is, an acrylic wash. We'll see. Let's see what happens. Ideally, with metallics, if you can avoid sealing them, the better because you'll you'll uh, you'll maintain the, that look you get when you brush them on. So, like this liquid metal, um, as long as it's been dried long enough, I usually don't seal it. I'll just let it go because you're not going to handle it a lot. Um, I'll just leave it because you don't lose any of the shimmer. Okay, so those are looking pretty good. I think I can get a little more depth to them. So I'm going to close this up for a second. I really wish I had Black wash. 
So I'm mixing up some ghost tints, brown, black, and water. Let's see what this does. I just want to kind of get in these details a little bit more. over this. Through the whole thing, just water. Yeah, once this dries and we dry brush this again, we'll have a really nice look. Yeah, kind of soak up some of the excess here and there. So I'm just doing kind of wet on wet. I haven't sealed this at all yet. And if I can avoid sealing it, I will. <clears throat> just so I can keep the nice shimmery metallic look without dulling it. Metallics tend to dull down and you lose that the metal look after you seal them. So if you can avoid it, that's ideal. Just going around kind of getting some of the excess up. I do want to make sure I have an even kind of coat of the squash and everything. So as it settles, it kind of pools down here. Just kind of soaking it up a little bit. dab it off with my paper towel and use my brush to get whatever pulls up a little bit. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Do the other one. I'm just kind of slopping around there, not being real careful. So this should look nice. We got a bunch of different kind of layers going on with metal and the wash and everything, it should look good in the end. Hopefully this dries pretty quick. This is mostly water, not much uh, paint tint in here. 
really want to kind of run into all the crevices and the, the details and stuff. Pretty good. You gotta just kind of soak up any excess. All right, we're gonna continue. This once dries, comes, uh, dries will come back and dry. Okay, this is what the blue looks like after it's all been sealed and everything. We darken it down just a little bit. Looks really good. And the cape is done, so I'm gonna hang that up and show you. So we got the cape done. Uh, I'll show you the helmets here in a second. Uh, the base is done and the blue is done. So pretty good day. So I'll be right back. Okay, here's the cape. Let me darken it down a little bit. Looks really good. Nice shading. So that's looking good. And then we have the helmets down here. So we got the plastic helmet. Oops, it's got that little kind of polished metal look. And we've got this guy here. After we did the weathering or the washes and everything and dry brushing, it looks really good. So that's it for this work in progress. Um, so next will be, we'll probably, I'll work on base coating the skin tones and I'll work on the rest of his suit. So stay tuned for work in progress number two. And thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.